All right, I'm gonna continue with the UEFI development here where I left off. I am printing the partitions for the disk image, only the disk image, although if you ran it on an actual machine, you should have probably more than just the disk image here, but just as a recap, I'm printing the block IO protocol media values, so a pointer to a struct for each block IO protocol that's found, and each one of those corresponds to a portion or the entire portion of a given disk, including the disk image that this is running off of. So we have the disk image, the EFI system partition, and a data partition. So on this video, or this part, I want to read a file from this basic data partition, the last one on the screen here, because I don't have a file system under that. It's not like an EFI system partition. I can't read through a file system because it doesn't have a file system to read from. But if I add a file to the data partition, I am saving a file under this data fls.inf in the EFI boot directory on the EFI system partition. And that contains the contents of whatever files that were added through the right GPT tool to make the disk image, whatever files were added to the data partition from that. So here I just have a file test.txt. It just contains the word testing in all caps. So I wanna see if I can read from that and maybe make a couple of decent abstractions, some helper functions to make that look a little bit easier in the code. So the only thing that's there is test.txt, which I have locally here. It'll just be this, this data here, testing. So I wanna see if I can read that from that portion. So I'm gonna add another thing to the start menu, which maybe I'll make this global instead of just being in main, but eh, it's fine. I'll just make another function here because I'm going to read that text file and then change to try to read a binary file to work as like a kernel later on. So I'm just going to call it, I don't know, read data file or something, or read data partition file. We'll say, I'll rename it later probably. We'll just say we have that. And I'll say read file from data partition. So I'll make another function for that stuff here. And this will just be read file from the data partition, I guess. Read a file from the basic data partition. But I plan on making a couple other functions for helper files as well. But we'll just say it'll return a status by default or return success. And I guess I can take in nothing at the moment until I decide what I want to do. And I'll just print, at the moment, we'll print test or here or something so that I know where I'm at. And we can get a key before we go on and I'll clear the screen just so that's the only thing that prints so that I know the menu option works. So this read file from data partition, yeah, just says here, press any key, it goes back. Okay, so I want to make a couple of abstractions so that we can read the file. I know it's going to be within that data fls.inf file. So let's say maybe I print out info about the file we're going to read just, just so I can verify that we read the data from there correctly, and then I'll read the file itself. So let's say I do that. So I'll say let's print file info for data fls.inf file and EFI boot. We'll say it's in this path. I'll say from path this. And then we'll say read and print actual file info from data partition. So I'll try and do these, these things, and then this will be a text file later. I'll try to make it a binary. So I want to make things a little bit easier, and I'm still kind of thinking through that at the moment. <laughs> I should have thought through it more before. But to do this, we'll need to do a few things. We'll have to read probably from block IO or disk IO, their read functions to read from positions on the disk image or another disk. And I want to read this from the EFI system partition. So let's say I make a function that's not here right now, but let's say read file or read ESP EFI system partition file just to a buffer. And it'll probably be a helper function up at the top somewhere. So I'll add that. Let's say I'll just call it read file to buffer. I'll give it a path. It'll be U16 path or UTF16. So it'll be EFI, well, I can just pass the slashes, I think, or well, no, because it takes back slashes for, <laughs> so we have to escape these. Yeah, because Windows is fun like that, okay. So let's say I give it the path here, I'll just give it a, a literal path. Let's say it returns like a void pointer or something. So I'll have a file buffer and it'll equal that. 
And let's say for the signature for this, I'll put it here just so I don't forget. We'll say if it returns void, then we couldn't find the file, for example. So we'll say if not file buffer, then I'll print an error out and we'll say could not read. Maybe I'll make it a, a string here so I can have it more than one place. So we'll say file name. We'll just make that a literal, then I can just give this the file name, that'll be all right. So it could not read this file. To buffer, I guess I'll say could not find or could not read, could not find or read file to buffer, just for a better error message here. And that'll be file name. And then my error function will print this and we'll get a key from the user, then it'll go on. And I guess I'll return some other kind of status. I'll just return like one, so it's not a non-zero status, which if I success is zero, so that'll just be an error condition there. So we'll say we have a, a function to do that. And reading the actual file, we'll have to parse the data from this file to actually read that. So I'll say parse data from on a file, I'll say to get file position and length. I suppose I don't know how big it is, but yeah, that should be contained in this file info. So if I look, if I look in that, what I'm saving for each file is the name. So I'd have to search for the name, I guess. I'll just search for that name in there. We'll get the size of it and the position. So I'll have to get something to convert or I'll make something to convert this to an actual number and not just text, and also to find these things within the file if we have a bunch, like a string string function to find a substring. Something like that will probably need to be made. So we'll just start off with this stuff. So let's read a file to a buffer, make an abstraction for that. I don't know where I want to put it, I guess above everything else. Should be easier to go to the top of the file for that. I should move these things into another file anyway, which I keep saying I'm gonna do. <laughs> Maybe I'll do it in this video. I'll put it above text mode, because these are all sort of helper functions up there. All right, I'll put it here. So let's say we have a function. This will be to read a file in the EFI system partition into a buffer. I'll say, yeah, that's fine. Maybe output buffer. Fairly self-explanatory. So returns non-null pointer to allocated buffer with file data. I'll say it'll be allocated from allocated with boot services allocate pool. So the caller would have to call free pool on the return buffer. So I'm doing allocate pool or else if I did allocate pages, I'd have to probably take another parameter to return for the number of pages for allocation. If we just call allocate pool, then all we need to do is call free pool with the singular pointer. So it makes this file, so this makes this function signature a little easier to work with, a little simpler. So the caller will have to call free pool, but that's okay. Or null if not found or error, we'll say. Just do that. Let's say note. Caller will have to use free pool on returned buffer to free allocated memory if valid, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. That's pretty self explanatory. So the avoid void pointer, read ESP file to buffer, we'll take in HR16T file path or just a path. Okay, and the way I want to do this, let's say right now we return null, or I'll just have a buffer up here. Set that equal to null and I'll return the buffer by default. So the way I've done this before is with the loaded image protocol, which it never finds it from that for some reason, but that's all right. So I'm opening block IO like where I'm printing the partitions that I did in the last video. Let's get the loaded image protocol to get the device handle on that loaded image for this loaded disk image. That way I can get the simple file system protocol 
to get a pointer to the root directory, and then I can call open from that into the file that's referenced from the ESP, which let's assume we pass in a file that's from root, so qualified. So let's say read a fully qualified file path in the EFI system partition into an output buffer. We'll say file path must start with root slash. Okay. I suppose I can do that. Well, that would mean I need it. Yeah, so it starts with the two slashes there. Okay. I'll say escaped as needed by the caller with slash slash. That makes sense, I think. All right, so let's get the loaded image protocol and I'll open that up. I guess we'll have status we print there. I'll return the file buffer. You could also just return an EFI status here and then take the buffer as an input parameter that we fill out within this function. I didn't know the best way to do this. I figured this was a way to have less arguments that are needed for this. So you could do it a few different ways. It depends how you want to do error handling, really. If you want to propagate the status back, then you'll have to return that a different way than I'm doing. But anyway. So I'll get the loaded image, loaded image protocol first to grab device handle to use simple file system protocol on. Assuming that that works. Does this compile yet? Probably not. Unidentified thing, that's true. Because we need a status to use that first. That has to be defined. There we go. So the path is unused. That's fine. Assuming we got loaded image, we'll go on from there. And then I want to open something on the device handle, but it will not be the block IO protocol. Let's see. Let's say we go somewhere else with this. Where else did I use it in this function? Yeah. Read and print the files in the EFI system partition. So that's basically what I want to do here. Get the fi open file system protocol, get the root directory with open volume. Let's grab that stuff. So I could have made different abstractions to make this stuff less duplicated as well, but that's okay. Basically, you just need the GUID and the protocols and then open those protocols, right? So the first one we're opening on the image itself, the global image, which I probably could use instead of loaded image device handle, but that's fine. Let's assume it's different. <laughs> the, system, the simple file system protocol just gives us one function to open uh, the volume or the, the EFI system partition, in this case, for the disk image. It'll get us a pointer to the root directory on that volume. So that's why we need this. And we use the device handle return from the loaded image protocol in order to open the simple file system protocol. Assuming that works. And I probably want to close the open protocols at this point as well. So let's say we have cleanup like I'm doing here. I'll do that instead. I'll make a cleanup label, which is not great, but that's all right. Say final cleanup before returning. And I'll just clean up any open protocols and things. So close open protocols, assuming they're open here. If it's the first one, we won't really need to, but we seem to have gotten that all right. Let's look at close protocol. Let's do this. Yep. Little duplication didn't hurt nobody. Of course, this assumes that we opened this. It might not error if we try to close it, though. Let's assume it won't error, unless it's already open, and it's okay. So it, assuming we get the simple file system, we'll close it at the end, and we'll close the loaded image protocol at the end as well. For this overall global image that we have, which in my case is a global parameter that's filled out at the top when I initialize things to start off with. That's where that image is coming from. But anyway, my jump list ruined me there, but that's okay. That's all right. So I have two buffer. There we go. Go back to where I was. So if we get the simple file system, 
and we get open volume, then open volume would return a handle to the root directory here in this directory pointer. This points to root. In this case, I'll just call it root, I guess, because I'm not opening multiple directories. And that'll be all right. So assuming we got a handle to the root directory, what do I want to do with that? I want to call open. So of course I'm going <laughs> to copy other stuff, right? If we opened all right, I'll probably close it maybe. Well, I need to close it at the end, but oh well. So let's say open file in input path, which will be qualified from the root directory. Qualified from root directory. So I know I'm copy and pasting my prior code, try not to go too fast here or too slow. But if I'm given a root directory pointer, I want to use the right name, which is root. And I'm calling the open function, and that is from, because I forgot, <laughs> from the EFI file protocol, I'm pretty sure. Which gives us an open thing down here after these. Set position, get set info, should have been up here somewhere. I have closed but not open, there we go. So that is this function here. So I'm calling open with probably the root pointer. I need to get a new file though, which will be an EFI file, file protocol handle. So EFI file protocol, I'll say file. That'll be like a file pointer pretty much. And that'll be here. We'll have a pointer to that, so it makes a double pointer. We have the file name, which is gonna be passed into this function as path. That's the input path. That's gonna be fully qualified from root, so we can reference it from root here. That'll be all right. And then we have the read, the mode we wanna open it with. I'll probably just do read here, and then I don't need to worry about the flags because I'm not creating the file. I'm assuming that opens, we're good. Otherwise, we could not open it. Trying to save my error, my error functions, my error text looks all right here. Cannot open simple file system. Volume for root directory, we did that. I'll say in ESP. This one I'll say could not open file percent %s. This will be the path. All right. Okay, but if we did that, then I know we have a file for the root directory there. So this this is called from read ESP file to buffer, yes, okay. So we should print here if we got to this point all right, because it'll go through that and then clean stuff up. I do need to close most likely the open root pointer, so let's do that. And that'll be from root, and it should just be close given root. I think that's all I need to do there. It's with the bit, yeah. I just close it with the pointer to itself. That'll be all right. And we'll have to close the open file pointer as well. So I'll say close open file or directory pointers. I'm doing this now so I don't forget later. And I can call close on itself, so I can call that from the file itself, which is going to be file, close file. Okay, and then the protocols. All right, so that should be all right for cleanup. So let's see if we get this far without an error, including compile errors, which is not what happened. Uh, well, I can see what the function, function says cannot find a read file to buffer, so I know I got an error there. Give me a lot of warnings here, pal. Variable files uninitialized whenever if is true. Expand it from this macro for the error. File close file. Okay. Move the if if it's always false. So it's uninitialized. Okay. So if this is if this if is true, it's not initialized from here, but it is from this function call. And then this would not happen here, I suppose. Okay, I guess I'll do it above here then, just in case. If it's true, it would be initialized and then that, and then that would happen. But root should always be initialized because that's from the 
open volume call here, I guess. Oh well, I mean, I can do it outside here, I guess. And that makes it shut up, okay. <laughs> okay, could not find or read this file to buffer, that's fair. It didn't say could not open or anything, it just said could not find or read, because right now I'm still returning null for the file buffer, but that's all right. Okay, so we should have a pointer to the file protocol here, an open pointer to the file. So what do I do with that? I want to read it into a buffer, so I should know what size the file is from the EFI file protocol. So let's allocate buffer for file, and then I'll read the file into the buffer and then return the buffer. So I have the file buffer. It's all the way up here. And I can allocate pool, but I want to look at the file protocol again. I think it's, is it just EFI file info? Yes. Okay. So we have these values within that EFI file protocol struct. In this case, I just called it file right here. So I should have the size for that. So I can call BS on that and allocate a pool of memory according to that size. And I don't remember how big that is actually. So if I allocate pool, takes in the pool type, which should just be, I don't remember. Let me copy my other, <laughs> my other uh, use of it here. Okay, if I loader data, and that's what we're supposed to use. All right, and then we give a buffer size and a buffer. The buffer in this case, since it is a double pointer, yeah. In case my head's in the way, that's a double pointer, so I have to give an address to a pointer. In this case, it's file buffer. The buffer size, I think, is a uint n. So I'll say that is going to be the file dereference to get the file size. Yeah, which is a uint 64. So size is the size of the struct, all the struct data. File size is the size of the file itself. And then physical size is the size in the file system, I guess. But I'll just grab the overall size, just in case. Because I feel, I feel like that's probably what I need to use here. And then if I couldn't open it, then I'll go to clean up. I probably do want to close these things at this point. So I need like two cleanups here. <laughs> In case it happens at this point. This is not a good way of doing error handling, but that's alright. So I could not allocate memory for this file. The file would be path. Okay, that'll work. So if we did allocate a file, we do have to free that later with free pool. Which is also in boot services. So I'll just free pool on the pointer that we used for allocate pool, which is going to be that file buffer. All right. But if we did get there, actually, that's what I want to return. So never mind. If we couldn't free it, we'll free it from the caller. Yeah, never mind. That's my return variable there. Okay, but if we allocated the memory, let me see if that works. Remember named file size and EFI file protocol instruct. We have it right here, though. Oh, that's in file info. I have to get the info for it. Ah, uh, duh. I have to call get info. I forgot. I have to call this first, of course. <laughs> so I need that first. Okay. Uh, there's always too many functions here. Okay, so I don't want to allocate a buffer just yet. I'll put to do down there as well. So let's do get info for file to grab file size. If I file info, I need a pointer to the buffer, which is a void pointer, but I can just pass the address probably. Yeah. I'll just make this a regular struct, call it file info. Then buffer size I can actually put here. And that'll just be size of file info or EFI file info to start off with, because we need that for the call. So this should have git info inside of it. Passes in the file itself, we'll do that. We could call this from the root pointer as well, but I'll just call it from the file pointer. Either one will work. This is referring to itself. We need the GUID information type, of course. Mm. 
file info GUID. And it needs to be, we'll pass in the address to that. This will be EFI file info ID. Okay, then I need the buffer size, which is going to be buff size, and that is also a pointer. It'll give me the actual size on output. Hopefully that's all right. And then the buffer itself. So the buffer itself, I can just pass the address to the file info struct. And in this case, it should fill that out with the data. And I guess I'll check the status again. Could not get file info uh, for this file that's passed in. Okay. And if we couldn't, we'll close these things and leave. Otherwise, we have the file info within the file info struct. Hopefully. So then I can interrogate that and then get it for this. So in this case, if we got the file info, we can use that for the buffer size to load the file into. To allocate the buffer to load it into, rather. So that will be file info dot file size, which is what I wanted to do originally. Okay, so far so good. Just want to make sure here. Okay. And if we got the right size, we'll be all right. And then I want to read the file into that which is another function from the file protocol. I guess I could always have these up on the second half of the screen, might be easier. So I can call read on the file itself, or the buffer size that we want to read, which is going to be this buffer size, which hopefully is the same size as the file. So let's say, if not status, I'll say or, the output of buffer size is not equal to file info dot file size. That would mean we haven't read the full file data. We haven't allocated that for the pool. I'll say we could not do that. So this way, if we get to this point, we know we've allocated enough memory for the file. Now I want to read the file into that buffer. So we'll read the file. The buffer size will be whatever our buffer size is, which needs to be a pointer. File protocol is a pointer. That should be all right. And then the buffer itself. This one will be the file buffer that we'll read the file into. And I guess again, I'll do all of this. Let's say I make another thing here. I'll call it file cleanup. That'll be before the actual cleanup. So not great, but that's all right. So that way instead I can do file cleanup, not have to do these things every single time, which is only in those two, no, these three cases. Okay, so if we allocated the buffer for the file, I want to read that file into the buffer. And depending on the status, we can check if that succeeded. I guess this is how Go programmers do everything, right? So I'm just copying what they're doing, <laughs> or maybe they copied C. That's all right. Could not read file. I'll just print this every every time into buffer. Okay, and again, I'll check what size was actually read. So I'll say or buff size not equal the file info file size. Because that would mean we didn't read all of the bytes for the file into the buffer. So if there was an error or we didn't read or we didn't read all of the file data, I'll say we could not read it. If we could, then we're good to go. And if we read it into the buffer, I'll just return that buffer and go on. We'll return it implicitly. So I'll say we'll return buffer with file data or null on errors. Okay. And that should be all I need here. Not too bad, a little over, a little over 100 lines, but that's okay. So we'll see if I get any errors where it says here, it says here. Okay, so I'm assuming we have the file data at this point from the caller of this function. And I would have closed the root directory in the file. So all we should have open is the allocated buffer at this point. There's no other open protocols. I just want to make sure. Because we did open volume, which is all right. Yeah, okay. All right, so at this point we should have the file data, so I want to parse it out. First, I guess I'll print it out just to make sure, which I've done before as well. 
So just called like string probably. Yeah, like down here. I guess I don't know how much, how big the file is. So maybe I do need another, <laughs> another thing for that. I didn't think that through, did I? Yeah, let me actually pass another parameter to there. And it'll be file size. I'll pass a pointer for that. So I guess it would be better maybe to do EFI status and then have this look like the other functions. Maybe that would be better. I don't know. We'll, we'll just, we'll, we'll do it live, right? That's all right. We'll just say we pass that in there. This will be an address, not a pointer. And we'll take in a file size. That will fill out if we actually allocated the buffer down here. Yeah, I'll just fill it out probably here if we if we filled out the buffer. So set output file size and buffer. Or I guess it'd be the buffer size, but anyway. That'll be equal to buff size. Because it will have equaled the file size at this point. Okay, we'll just do that. Alright, so let me just print out the file contents because it will be ASCII data. So I just want to do that as a sanity check just to see what the file data looks like. Converting the singular new line on my host to a, um, a CRLF so that it prints correctly. And we'll see how that looks. Undeclared buffer, that's true, it is what? File buffer? Okay, and I have bytes equal to buffer size, which I don't have, it's file size. All right, so let's just see, just to make sure that we printed the data, hey, file contents, file name, disk size, disk OVA, so we're good, we got the file, we allocated a buffer to it and we returned that. So hopefully that didn't seem like too much work, but this will provide a nice abstraction for stuff later if you wanna use it. In other places, you can just read a file from the ESP, given a fully qualified path from root, such as this. It should return that within a buffer and the size of that buffer. Pretty good abstraction to have. Okay, so I know I have the contents, so what I want to do is probably get the size of the file to read and what disk OBA it's at. So let's have these two things here. Maybe I should call this buffer size. <laughs> because I can use file size as a different parameter within this function, and it might make more sense. Just change my change my reasoning on the fly here, that's all right. Let me change what that looks like in here. Instead of file, well, it's read file to buffer. I guess it wouldn't, it wouldn't matter here. We already called something buffer size. You know what, I'll leave it file size in here. I'll just be confusing. That's fine. Naming is one of the two hardest things in computer science, right? So, Okay, so let's get the file position and length. Well, let's get file, let's get disk OBA and file, file length or file size. We'll get these values here. So that'll be okay, we'll get these. So what I can do is search for something like a substring within a larger string, which I don't have a function for this right now, but assuming I did, so something like C's string string function. Say so I copy that, because I don't have it right now. We'll find the first occurrence of the substring needle in the string haystack. Terminating null bytes are not compared, so just up to the string length of the file. String case string ignores the case, so it's case insensitive. So it returns a pointer to the beginning of the substring in the larger string, or the larger memory amount, or it returns null. Okay. If needle is empty, the return value is always haystack itself. All right, just copying that there. Because I'm going to have to write this function if I want to use this like this. So I'll say... It returns a character pointer, assuming it's character data, which in this case it will be within the file buffer. So we'll say this is going to be file pointer or something, or I'll say it's position, usually what I like doing, which is what I called this down here. Maybe I'll just call it P, that's fine. 
string position. So a string string, the overall file data would be file buffer in this case. That's what I'm filling out and returning here. Or the substring that I'm searching for would be, I could, we could print out file name, but right now I'm searching for file size. I'll say we grab the equal sign so we can move past that if we find it. And this will be UTF-8 string or an ASCII string, not a UTF-16 string in this case. Okay, so I have to write this function, but let's assume that it's written, and we'll say if we couldn't find the string position, it'll return, I guess, the string itself or a null, I suppose. So if not string position, it said it could return the overall string itself if it was empty. I'm not returning empty, but I guess if it did, that would be bad. So I'll say if the pointer's equal, then it couldn't find it, or maybe it'd be at the beginning. I don't know. I'll just say if it couldn't find it and it's a null, that would be an error. So I don't have to think about that case right now. Could not find a read file. In this case, I guess I'll go to clean up at the bottom as well. Instead of stuff at the bottom here, let's say, I'll do press any key to go back, similar to my other stuff. And I do need other cleanup in this function as well to free the buffer that was allocated just in case. Not find a read file to buffer. Yeah, I guess I would have to do that. So in this case, we would not have a buffer allocated. So maybe I only call cleanup and the, the rest I call like return or something or done <laughs> I don't, or exit, which is not a great label. Shouldn't be doing labels for this anyway, but that's fine. Uh, that would need two key presses, but that'll be okay. Yeah, I'll just do that. So we couldn't read the file to a buffer. We wouldn't get a buffer from this function. I'll go to exit. Otherwise, I'll go to cleanup. And cleanup, I'm going to free the memory that was allocated for the file, which is going to be in file buffer for ESP file. Okay. So I don't necessarily like doing this label style of sort of defer, <laughs> which C doesn't have, but right now it's the best that you're going to get from me, so that's okay. I'll just comment this out for now unless I want it later. Okay. So if it could not find the file size, we'll say could not find file size for... Yeah, I'll just say could not find file size from buffer, I guess. From buffer. Given this file name path. So for that file, could not find it from the buffer. That's, yeah, that's reasonable. If we could find it, and I know I still have to write this function saying that so I remember. It's a character pointer, so it has one byte pointer arithmetic. I don't have string length either, but that's easy enough to write. We'll just move past that. This should be 489. This should be 10 characters, but we'll just say we'll move past the string length for that, which should be 10, to get the actual data afterwards. So at that point, stay while, while the data at string position is going to be a digit, or we can even add is digit. I can just add all these helper functions while I'm thinking of it right now. <laughs> add more libc stuff. All is digit, we'll just increment that bad boy there. And I'll have to add it to a thing. Yeah, so let me do that actually. If we want to have like a sort of A2I function, which I could write instead of this, maybe I'll do that afterwards. I'll just say use an A2I function here instead. But while we have a character that's say in between, you know, zero and nine, we'll increment, but we need to add it to the file size here. So that will equal the current size times 10 plus whatever that thing is minus zero, right? So the character there minus whatever that was, 48. <laughs> 
think that's hex hex 30 and then that'll convert the character to an int and add next decimal digit to the running total for the file size and we'll go as long as that's there okay Okay, and then after that, I'll do the similar thing for the disk LBA value. I'll just look for that, which I don't remember the correct text string for that. It is disk underscore LBA. Okay. I'm glad I was consistent, at least for that. So disk LBA value from buffer. Then we'll do this stuff. disk lab and I'll grab that except instead of file size this will be in the disk LBA value here so maybe I'll do this here actually use it where it's actually used okay and I'll grab that keep putting disk lab which might be like some, you know, experimental jungle record from the 90s or something. Call it Disk Lab. That'd be, that would go pretty hard. Sounds like an OST to Monkey Ball or something. I don't know. But all right, we'll do that. So that's assuming we have a file position in the disk LBA, and then we can go from there. So I need to write these other functions here, but let's assume we have the data and then we can, um, we can print the data. So let's just do that. I'll say debugging here, temp here. And I'll just print the values, just to make sure we got them correctly. So I'll say file size percent %d and disk lba percent %x or percent %d. I'll do u for both, actually. Okay, and at this point, it'll go on and free the pool and then go back. Yeah, that'll be okay. Okay, I'll put two new lines beforehand. All right, so I need to write this function and a few others. So I'll put it under my mem copy, I guess above my string functions, that's fine. So I don't have string string right now. Nope, I do not, okay. This won't be character 16, it'll be regular. So I'll say ASCII string string. So I'll say, yeah, return a pointer to the beginning of the located substring, or null if it is not found. If needle is empty, the return value is always haystack itself. Okay. This would be this character pointer here. Just copy that, although for other ones I'm not using constants, it doesn't matter too much. Probably would be better to use constants so the compiler can make assumptions, but that's all right. Okay, so I need to write that. I need to write is digit which I think is all one word. Yeah, it is, okay. And what else? Just those two here? And string length. Because I don't have that elsewhere. Nope. Okay. Just to differentiate from char 16. I'm putting those little notes here. Okay. So hopefully I'm not going too scatterbrained here. I'm just trying to <laughs> get everything laid out. So string string, I don't think will be too bad. We'll just have to check until we're at the end of the thing here. So I'll say while we're not at the end of the haystack, of course we could check if it's an empty string. So if not needle, the second thing here for returning, and we'd return the value is always haystack itself. Just have that as a 
a base case there. All right, so while we have data here, it's not null, it's not at the end. We want to do some stuff. I'll say if the first character that we're at, or the current position that we're at, which I can probably get another thing to that. So let's do P, because we might have to move the, the value later. All right, so if the first letter in there equals the one for the substring, we might have to get another one for that in a second. But if they equal, we need to see if the full thing equals pretty much. So if the full thing equals, we should have string compare. I don't have string compare, actually. <laughs> uh, that's okay. I can do that with a, a mem compare, kind of. I have to write a bunch of stuff here. That's all right. Going a little bit too fast for my liking, but that's okay. Uh, these will be strings. Stop at first point, they don't equal, or end of string. Null value. Zero if equal, greater than, if int is greater. S2, less than. I'm putting S to stand for string and not memory in this case. Oh, and if I didn't show it in the last one, I did fix my my error here. I mean, I'm casting to an end, but I had like P1 and P2 because I was talking at the same time I was typing. So sorry about that issue in the last video, but I, I should have fixed it here with this, with the mem compare. But anyway, these are going to be character pointers. S1 and S2 for string compare and a length. And we can get pointers to those if we want. That's okay. I, might, I may not need those for these, though, because they're already going to be character pointers. So up until the length here, if S1 and S2 don't equal, or source and dest, we'll say S1 and S2, or we'll return the differences in there as an integer. Else we'll return zero, and it needs to be a better comparison here. So if we're less than length, and we have the strings, S1 and S2, and they're not at the end of the strings, so if the data at S1 and S2 is not zero, it's true. And if the strings themselves are not zero, they're true. Then we'll go on. Else we'll return zero if we reach the end, or I guess those aren't there. I'll just do a break here, actually. We'll do this, and I'll add another thing here. If length is zero, return zero. All right, else we'll go through the strings here. If they don't equal, I'll break, and we'll return the data at that point. So let me make a thing here so we have it available outside, outside of the loop. And if I do it like this, I kind of like it to look like a while loop. For me, it reads a little bit better. Okay. I could also just use length and not i, but that's all right. Well, i less than length, the strings are valid, and we have data at the strings. If, this, if the data doesn't equal, we'll break and get the difference. Else it does equal, we'll go on. I think that's all right for a string compare. It's probably not correct, and I'll see that later, but right now I'll assume that's okay. Till it's not. <laughs> all right, so to use that within finding a substring, if the first character matches, I want to check if the whole substring matches. So if the whole substring matches, this should be zero. And I can match the data at haystack, which is this position P, compared to the needle. And let me just, yeah, I'll get another one here. We'll do P and Q, might as well, or S for substring, or just string. All right, if they do match, then I'll return the point at which they match, which will be the point that we start with P here. Okay, else they do not match, and we want to go on, so I'll increment P there which I guess we're not going to increment needle outside of this, right? But whatever, I'll keep it like this. I think that's okay. At the end, if they don't match, we got to the end of the memory, I'll return null. But if they do match in here from this, we'll return the point at which they match from the string comparison. I think that's all right. Hopefully it's probably not, but we'll see. Okay, for is digit, that one's pretty simple. I'll just have a boolean there, or I can even do the UEFI boolean. 
And that returns, well, it returns an int rather, which is probably one or zero. And I'm not doing the underscore L versions. Checks for a digit zero through nine. Return value is non-zero or zero if not. I mean, a Boolean handles that as well. I'll just say character C in this case. So let's do... Let's be ASCII is digit. Return true. I'll say or one if char C greater than or equal to zero and less than or equal to nine, else zero false. Okay, and that's easy enough. Just a small abstraction. This could be inline probably, but whatever. That's simple enough. This is ASCII is digit, so ASCII string line. I mean, I could suffix these with ASCII as well. That would probably make more sense for what I'm doing if I want to do char 16t versions later, but that's okay. String length is pretty easy as well. Turns length of string not including null terminator. And we'll just say that's a uint in or a size t. What does that return? A size t? Okay, I'll just say uint in in this case. So I'll have length equals zero, and we'll say while s length plus plus and s plus plus. I mean, I can just do that. That's simple enough. Yeah, I think that's fine. So will that make everything work over here? Probably not. But we'll see if we even get any data at this point, else we'll have a bunch of compile mistakes. Two fee arguments, function call, string compare, because I need... I did string in compare, not string compare. That is true. This will be in compare, because I'm going up to a length. So that would mean... Uh, I could do it without the length, though. If I just wanted the regular one, else I could do mem compare. Let's, I'll do the regular one. Which is not as good as the the new the uh, length comparison, but that's all right. Right now, we'll just have it be this. Which is just while the strings are valid, if they don't equal, return the difference at that point, else we'll go on. Okay. And then we only need that without the length. Undeclared identifier buff size. 18, that's 19. 1, 8, 7, 8, that's fine. Because uh, I called it file size. Okay, redefinition. Because I called it buff size. All right, buff size. Is that why? Yep. Call the undeclared function is underscore digit. Because I did not put the underscore there. Redefinition of string position, that's true. Don't need it there because I instantiated that here. And while well, it's digit again, without the underscore. Okay, so I doubt this is going to work, but sometimes you don't know. Could not find file size from buffer. Okay. Which would be string string, right? That's why I have all this error function everywhere. So it did not find file size. Why is that? Probably from the string compare being bad. P equals S. It's not string compare. Otherwise, we increment the point at which we're checking. These two should be valid. So maybe the data isn't valid there. I suppose if we reach 
The point at which we have a zero, it's not good. I don't know. I could do this without the string compare and probably check. Or I could do this a better way. <laughs> which would probably be good. So I know it doesn't work. Because this error happened. So it never went to here. I'm just checking. Well, this is above printf. Um, I'm just checking something here. So it should print that probably a bunch of times. Yeah, a couple times. Only two times. Interesting. Only twice. That's interesting. It should print that for like... Well, the two times it matches, I suppose. Not string compare return, otherwise output testing. Okay. It should print a bunch of times if I put it here. I just want to see if there's an odd, like a very small number of times. Okay, so it does go through every character. That's all I was trying to test. Okay. I guess I don't need to do this really. Because this is an offset, it doesn't increment the strings and it passes by value anyway. So really you could just do this. Which is not going to make it work. That's just one less thing I have to look at. Nope, okay. But it does go into there. I guess this says if it doesn't equal, I guess if it makes it all the way back, then it does equal, right? Maybe? I don't know. <laughs> the kernel doesn't have, or the man pages don't have an example, probably. I just know I have to, oh yeah, it does. No, it doesn't. I could do mem compare and use string length. That might work. So if not mem compare, See if that does anything. Undeclared function, because it's probably after. No, it's right up there. Oh, not to length, probably, yeah. <laughs> Is this a bad way of doing this? Probably. Oh, still doesn't work. Nope, it gets the file size there. Ooh, okay. So my string compare is wrong, but the mem compare is right. Okay. Because I'm probably not handling the null byte and stuff correctly. Uh, you know what? We'll just do that. We'll just do that. We'll just forget this uh, this ever happened and just not worry about that terrible code. <laughs> and not worry about the other terrible code. But this mem compare is okay. Assuming. So I'll do that instead. That works for me. Okay, file size and disk LBA. All right, so those are the correct values. So what I can do is use those values and read that many files from that position on the disk. So I'll do that. Which means I need another buffer. So read and print actual file info from here. Let's do that. Another buffer and I need to read the file into there. So I did want to do that with a different um, abstraction to make it a little easier here. So similar to this read file to buffer, let's say I make another abstraction, another function here, which will be read, let's say disk LBAs to buffer. That makes, that's self-explanatory. And I'll have a disk LBA value, which will be disk LBA. Um, I'll probably need a number of LBAs. Let's assume 512 bytes, I suppose. I could pass in an LBA size. Let's just say we have a number of LBAs here. And the buffer will be passed back. It'll be a different buffer. I guess another file buffer. Um, well, if I don't need the first one, because we got the data, then I could just reset it here. Let's do that. So I would call free pool on that. Which means I don't want to do a double free. But it'll free it later anyway. I just want, well, I can do a different, um, 
a different thing. Let's say it's disk buffer instead. I'll just do that. Yeah. I'll just do that. Uh, disk LBA's file. <laughs> uh, disk partition file. Yeah, I'll say that. Or data partition, rather. Okay, so this will be different, and we'll say I have another function for this called read disk OBAs to buffer, which will return the buffer in there. I have another thing, another thing here. I'll just go to cleanup. Um, well, we don't want to call free if it doesn't do it. I'll just call free on here and go to exit, then that's fine. I don't have good ways of doing this. Okay, cannot find or read, we'll say data partition file to buffer. All right, but this will be a function that I have to make. So instead of a buffer size, I'll just pass the number of LBAs, or I could pass the file size and it determines the number of LBAs. Ooh, that would be better. I can do that. That way I don't have to worry about it. I'm assuming right now also this is going to read from the disk image itself, so really I could pass in a media ID for the disk image to, to use this as a function abstraction later to choose to read from a specific sort of disk. So that would be good functionality too. I guess I could add that in just in case. Let's say media ID. I think that's all I would need. So I read this amount of data at this position this amount of data at this position on this disk. And I return that data within a buffer that's allocated with allocate pool again, we'll say, so that I can call free pool later. That seems reasonable. Yeah, I could do that. Say print data partition file contents, assuming text file, ASCII text file, okay. Let's say read disk LBAs for file into buffer, which is what this is going to do. All right. And then we'll do that. So let's make that abstraction as well. I'll just put it after this function probably, might as well. And I'll just grab that. Okay, so this will be read a file from a given disk's media ID from a given disk by its media ID. Yeah, I'll just say that. Into an allocated buffer, into an output buffer. Okay. Turns non-null pointer to allocate buffer with data. It won't be file data, we'll just say data. Allocated with allocate pool or null if not found or error. Color will have to use free pool on return buffer. Yep, that's reasonable. We can do that. Read disk OBAs to buffer given these things. That's reasonable. Okay, I guess I'll say buffer, allocated buffer. We'll just say buffer. Void pointed buffer, void pointer buffer is null at the end, we'll return buffer. Okay, so the disk OBA will say is gonna be uint in value, or it can be EFI OBA, I think is a thing, which is uint64, which is uint in, but that's what UEFI defines it as. So we can have an EFI OBA value, and I can determine the size from the file size passed in or data size or something, size of data. I'll say data size. And the media ID will need, and that is a uint32, I think. Yeah, uint32 for the block IO. So I'm gonna get block IO, read in the block IO for the disk from the loaded image protocol. Again, it's device handle. I'm gonna open block IO to that. Just grab the media ID on the first one found because that'll be for this uh, loaded image, the disk that it's on, will have that media ID, as well as any other partitions on the disk image. And we can just use any one of them because they'll all match. So I'll just return whatever the first one's found from that. 
and then close the things and um, return, but that would be within the caller to this, because I would need to pass in the media ID. Uh, okay, so right now I didn't want to do that. <laughs> I didn't want to do that. All right. Right now this should just return this error here, could not read it to the buffer. Assuming it's there, which it's not. Unused parameter, yes. Undeclared identifier, that's true. You went 32. I'll say image media ID. Which this would work because it's zero by default. I just want to make sure that I get that error first. Remove if, if it's always false, that's fine. Press any key to go back. It doesn't give me an error there. It should give me this. Oh, because it's disk buffer. I'll clean up those errors. I just want to make sure I get the error right there. Yep, make sure I know where I'm at in my code. Okay. So these errors are not there. All right, variable is uninitialized when if is true. Um, and the other ones are not used. Okay, that's fine. So I'm, I am going to use these. I just want to make sure they're... Um, I have other issues that I'm clearing up. I want to make sure I don't have other issues at the moment. So suppress so warnings here. Mm, this buffer is initialized. Okay. So that's in this case. We free and go to exit. That's fine. It's not used within here. I don't know what that issue is. I mean, it would be used here, but I'm going to exit, which is after this point. So that's kind of an error that doesn't really matter. Um, but I can put it here if it doesn't like that. Not string position, 1890. Oh, that's up here. That's at this point, string position. I don't know why it's saying that weird stuff here. I'm just trying to figure out, because I could have other issues that happen now or later that are related. So I'm trying to see why it's referencing this variable when I'm not using it before. And I think it's because I'm using labels and stuff. I'm just making sure. String position goes to cleanup. That's why. Yeah, that's why. Okay. So if it's not used there and it goes to cleanup, we're not using disk buffer. And cleanup uses disk buffer. That's why. Okay, so I can fix that by just putting the things at the start. <laughs> eh, which I didn't want to do because it looks stupid, but that's fine. Yeah, so I'll just put it, I'll just put it at the top here. That's that's fine. Yeah, file buffer. Okay, so That way we make sure they're actually initialized and the compiler shuts up about me not knowing how to program, so, okay. So I wanna fill out this thing here. So to get the media ID, I can make another abstraction even. <laughs> make a bunch of helper function in, in, make a bunch of helper functions in this video. So let's say we do that here. So get media ID, let's say disk, disk number for block IO protocol media for this running disk image and this would be another abstraction we'll say so I'll say image media ID is going to be disk image media ID I'll just say this is a getter function that won't take in anything and maybe I'll make it an int instead of int32 it should be an int32, which will always fit within this larger number, hopefully. The uint32, that is. Uh, I just want to like have a value that I can return if it's negative, but I guess I could return just if I status in that case. So never mind. 
I'll just do that. And I'll pass that in as a pointer. Yeah, so I'll just do that. And if I get an error in this function, this time I'll return that as an overall status value. And this one, I can call this. We already have the buffer. Well, no, we don't yet. Um, I'll just do this stuff in here. I'll say could not find or get media ID value for disk image, which sucks. Wah, wah. Okay, so I'll make this function as well, which will be all right. Yeah. I'll do it after, well, I guess I'll do it after here, but it needs to be before, so it's defined before. I guess I'll put it up here. Say return or get, get media ID value for this running disk image. I guess you could try and abstract this more to give like the media ID for any disk, but I don't know how you would determine that without doing this work anyway. So this is kind of just an internal function for my stuff. I'm not sure this could be abstracted further, but it probably could. Probably could be more flexible if you're a better programmer than I am. Uh, but that's all right. I didn't call it that. What did I call it? Oh, I called it this, this right here. Grab that word, paste that in. We'll take in a pointer to the media ID value, which is a UN32 pointer. Say media ID. Okay. At the end, if we were good, I'll return success. Otherwise, I'll return a status, of course, as we go along here. Okay. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to take a break and I'll be back in one second to continue this. I just need to refill water and get my stuff. So hopefully you enjoyed so far and yeah, we'll continue on and read a file from the data partition. <laughs> so see you in a second. Okay. Back after break, got Mas Agua here. So we're good. Es bueno. All right. So to get the media ID, I know I've done this before when I'm reading the not the ESP files, the whatever I called it, printing, <laughs> printing the data partition values. I thought I called it that. I don't remember what I called the thing from main block IO partitions. Of course, not data partition. So I'm doing that in here because I'm getting the media ID. So that's basically what I'm going to do in this function. And then because I didn't want to duplicate things, I could probably copy it over here, at least not like 5,000 times. That's why I, I tried to think of abstractions and functions that could help over the past few days before uh, before this recording. And this was one of the things I thought of. So I will need block IO protocol. And I'll just grab the lip here, status, open block IO, get the media ID, and then close them. Let's do that. I'll just copy that code I already had. <laughs> oh, yes. Always easy when you've already done the work. <laughs> Isn't everything when you've already done the work? Just have that, give that an initial value there, and that's all right. So block IO protocol. I don't need a handle buffer for this. I'll just need a singular one, which we don't even need because we have that. So I won't need that. We'll get the loaded image protocol for this disk image. Could not open it or return status. Otherwise, we'll have open protocol. We'll open the block IO protocol on that loaded image. So let's say get, get block IO protocol for loaded image, for loaded images, device handle, and then we'll grab the media ID on there. I'll close the protocols and we'll be good. So that fills out this media ID. Yep, okay for this running disk image itself, and then we'll return and we'll be good after we close these things, the loaded image and the block IO on the loaded image. And it's simple. It's not very long. 
when you already have done the code before. So <laughs> I'm just putting it here if you want to pause and look at it. That's all that is. Incompatible pointer types are always good. Passing uint end pointer to uint32 pointer. Get disk image media ID, image media ID 1973. What a year that was. Way before I was born. Uint in, this needs to be uint32. Yep. Okay, status is undeclared identifier as well. This status here? Interesting. I guess I didn't use it up until this point. I'll just put that up here as well. If I status status equals, we'll just make it success by default. And that is the first point at which I used it. That makes sense. Okay. All right. So again, we're not going to get anything here because I'm not doing anything with the buffer yet. I just wanted to make sure that we actually got the media ID without, without issue. And that will be in the passed in parameter to this function to get the media ID, which I can then use to read the disk LBAs to the buffer. Okay. So let me do that next. Let's press the compiler warnings. All right. So I can use a block IO protocol, which I will need to do for the media ID, I guess. I guess I'll need to get the block IO protocol first. <laughs> uh, is there a good way to do that? I'd have to get everything. Yeah, I'd have to search through everything to get the right one to then read to the buffer. So that's okay. So I will have to do that. <laughs> Similar to this stuff. That is okay. But I'll just skip getting this media ID because I already did that. Could I put these both in the same function? Sure. But I want to use it for multiple media IDs. If possible, multiple disks. So I'll get the handle buffer. I don't need all of this stuff. I guess I'll grab that right now. I'm not going to print the partition info. Loop through and get, let's say, block IO protocol for input media ID for entire disk. I'll say note. I'm going to assume the first block IO found with logical partition false is the one we're looking for. So Logical partition in the media struct for the block IO protocol it is a true or false value. It's a Boolean. And if it's true, it's a partition. If not, it should be for the whole disk. Although if the disk only has one partition, this can also be true. But I'm going to assume we're only looking for disks with multiple partitions because that makes my life easier right now. <laughs> so that's why I'm doing this. If it's an issue later, depending if we want to write stuff to a different disk and this doesn't get the one that we want to write to, then I'll have to change this in the future. But right now, this should be all right. I'll say is the entire disk. Okay. Because I want to get an absolute offset. Otherwise, I'd have to convert the offset into an offset from the data partition specifically, which would have different LBA values than the whole disk, which is what I'm storing to read the files from. So anyway, this disk LBA is an offset from the start of the disk, not from a particular partition. So that's why I'm putting this here. Okay, but if we could not locate any, that's bad. If we could, I don't need that, really. We'll open protocol on everything here. We'll open this. Cannot open protocol on the handle. It'll continue. If we could open a protocol, I'll check. So if block IO protocol media, media ID equals our passed in media ID, which is going to be disk media ID, and the logical partition is false and not logical partition. It should be a Boolean. Yeah, it's a Boolean here in the block IO media. So if it's not there, then we should have found the whole disk if it matches the media ID. Right? Yeah. Okay. So I can return that. Well, actually, I can just leave because we'll have the right one to read from. 
So I'll, I will do that. That would be this block IO on this handle buffer. How do I know if I found the right one though? Let's say we have another Boolean here. Say found, Just say false. Found equals true, it's not leave, it's break. That's a different language, <laughs> it's break, break for C. So I'll say if not found, then I'll also have an error here. If I can get my keys right, so could not find block IO protocol for entire disk. Um, for disk with ID, and we'll do the media ID here. Okay, if we did find it, then we're good. Okay, I'll just return. Oh, I'll still return the buffer there. I guess I'm returning the buffer and not the status. <laughs> the buffer will be null if it gets to this point, so that's okay. Yeah, okay. So this finds a handle buffer for all block IO protocols on the system that it can find. Going through all those, it'll open all of those. If we could not open, it'll error and continue. If we could open it, then we'll see if it's the one we're looking for for the whole disk. If it's good, then we'll leave. Else we'll keep going on. If we didn't find if we didn't find it, we'll return. Okay. So I do want to close the ones that are bad as well. So let's go back to my block IO, because I know I did the code in there to close them. Inside of the loop where I'm opening these things. I did it at the end. Yep, there we go right there. So instead of doing continue, I guess I'll close it and then go on. Otherwise, I'll close it anyway at this point. Okay. And I also want to close it at the end after I'm done because I'll still have it open. Because if we escaped and we found the right one, we'll have an open block IO protocol at this point because it would not have been closed at this point. So I will have to close that before I leave. And that's okay. Okay, so I should have an open block IO protocol in BIO. I think. BIOP, rather. So I can use that here. And that should have a read blocks function. Or I can also open a disk IO on that. So I'll do that instead. I can close the block IO, I guess, because I'll have a disk IO available. I guess I'll keep them open. I'm just, I want to use disk IO because I haven't used it before and it's easier because it's just byte wise instead of LBA wise. So disk IO protocol here. Hmm. Disk IO protocol here. We'll have disk write and disk read. We'll just use disk read. I think, yeah, disk read, okay. So we'll just use this function here, because we just have an offset and a buffer size, and those will be in bytes for disk IO. But I'll need to open that protocol as well, so let me grab these two things, and we'll do that. So I'll say git. Get disk IO protocol on, um, I guess same device as block IO protocol on same handle. Instead of block IO, I'll do disk IO, so DIO, DO, DO Brando. Disk IO protocol GUID should be, yep, I have that defined, okay. I'll just copy my open code and close code for that. And copy an error line for that as well. So we could not open the disk IO for some reason. I'll say we could not open disk IO for some reason. And 
and that'll be... How do I know which handle buffer it is? I guess I would have to save I, wouldn't I? Let's do that then. That'll be alright. That way we have I available outside of this loop. Outside of that scope, so I can still use the same handle buffer I there. I'll have disk.io, I'll have disk.io protocol. Image, open it, okay. If we couldn't do that, I guess I could close. Well, we'll close regardless down here. Oh, I'm doing cleanup everywhere. Might as well have the same label. <laughs> Just to be consistent. Love go-tos in code. People hate it. Makes me want to use it more. No, not really. I just don't know better ways of doing that right now. If C had defer, I would be very happy. And I think there's deliberations to put it into C2Y. If not C23, I don't think it'll be in there, but maybe later we'll actually have an, a working defer statement. That'd be great, but that's okay. So if this guy is there, then we're good. So what do we do if we have this guy? Uh, we can use read disk, I suppose. And then I can clean up the protocol here when we're done. I guess before this point. So I called it D-O-G-O-I-D, okay. So use disk.io read to read into buffer. I guess I need to allocate a buffer. Allocate buffer for data, which would be allocate pool. Because that's what I'm returning, and I already have buffer here, so I'll use that. Disk LBA and data size. So we have those available, so I just need to do this. Okay. Data size and it'll be in the buffer. Yep. Except I'll need another thing here if that fails. Okay, this will be could not allocate buffer for file data, or just for disk data. I guess just, yeah, this data is fine. Okay. And the user will call, the caller for this will call free pool on the buffer, and that'll be all right. So this guy will read into that buffer, and it takes in this, so we'll do read, because I think it's just read, or what is it actually? It's read disk, okay. So that's at the, oh, it's at the bottom here, if my head's in the way, I'm calling read disk, this function. And that is defined here. So we need the this pointer, which is the disk IO protocol itself. Then I need the media ID, which is gonna be the passed in media ID, which is disk media ID. That's why I made these input parameters, these values, of course. Offset, I don't remember what that is, but I do have the spec open. Hey, in case I had situations like this. Offset is the starting byte offset on the device to read from. Okay, so the byte offset would be the LBA value times the block size of the device. So data size, no, sorry. <laughs> Disk LBA is going to be the LBA offset. We'd have to convert that to bytes. So it would be multiplied by a value to convert. The value would be our block IO media. Um, I think just block size. Yeah. Oh, I had it there. Case sensitive. So block IO media has a block size parameter. That's the size of a block in bytes. That's what I'm going to be using. So if we multiply the LBA, which I'm assuming is a disk block, I mean, it is a disk block. I'm assuming the user of this knows it's a disk block. The caller of this function. Multiply that by the block size to convert it to bytes, and that would be the starting offset of that OBA on the device itself. 
So other than that, we'll need the size of the buffer, which is going to be data size. If I can autocomplete correctly. And then the buffer itself is just a void pointer, which is going to be buffer. Okay. And we can get a status for that as well. Which I didn't copy the starter line. Let me do that. If that was an error. I'll say could not read disk LBAs into buffer. And I'll close the disk IO and go to cleanup. All right. Else I'll just close it when done. Well, if we read it into the buffer, I'm going to close it anyway. I just know that that'll be bad. <laughs> the user should know that it's going to be a bad buffer. I could probably set the buffer to null in this case but then we wouldn't be able to free the data. So I'm not sure what we do. Hopefully we don't get this error, I guess. I'm not sure what to do at that point, but <laughs> assuming it worked, we'll have read the data into the buffer. And we'll do that and we'll return it. Because I'm returning a void pointer and not an EFI status. I could return a status instead, which would be better. But, oh well. Okay. Okay, so I think this will be all right. We'll call read disk for a byte value, starting at this byte value on the disk. From this disk, media ID for this size into that buffer. I think that'll work, hopefully. I guess we'll find out. So the color of this function if it returns null, it did not work. Else, we'll clear and press any key to go back. So we'll see if we get an error for that, which have errors for everything. Undeclared identifier status. Yeah, that usually happens. Because I don't have status defined. Yep. I should just add that into everything. Or I can have a global status, which would be useful here, actually. I don't know why I didn't think of that until now. A global status would be nice. Oh, they don't uppercase the D in media ID. Why would they why would they do that? I've only ever read it as ID with a capital D, but you know, they have to be fancy like that. No parameter name read disk in block IO protocol. Because I called it block IO protocol. I need to call it disk IO. Sorry about that. If you're yelling at your screen, I deserve that. That's why I have the compiler catch my mistakes. I'm not smart enough to not make them. In the first place. Okay, so we didn't get an error. That means the buffer is not null, and I didn't have anything else print out. So we should have that disk LBA data within the buffer, which is nice. Should be in the keyword there. Holds up all the weight of that sentence. So then I can print the contents, assuming it's still ASCII data. So I will do that. Search wherever I did this before. Because <laughs> I got rid of it. When I did this, all right. Go back in my jump list, okay. So we'll print the file contents. I'll say disk instead of file. I could have gotten the the file name from the data files INF file as well, I suppose. Probably should add that in anyway, because <laughs> I'm just assuming, oh, it's random data on the disk. Not really, but it's going to be in this passed in disk buffer. We'll have a position to it, we'll have the size and bytes, which will be data or file size in this case, in this calling function. And I'll just print that out, I suppose, and then I'll clean up the stuff, okay. Let's see if we got the word testing. Hey, there we go, testing. Hey, it took eh, a little over an hour and a half, so it's longer than the last video, but hey, I read a file from the data partition and made some abstractions and other functions along the way. It's the friends we made along the way, friends being functions. So what does this mean? It means we can read arbitrary data from a disk partition in case we had something like a kernel. And this video has gone on long enough and I got to keep you enticed to come back. So I guess I'll end on that little cliffhanger and we'll do that on the next one. <laughs> I don't want to have a, hundreds of videos in this playlist. I just, I want to keep things in manageable chunks, right? And I did... For me, I did kind of a lot on this video, so. Uh, this is just testing here, I'll say debugging. Remove when done. But this just proves that we can print a file. At this point, if you want to print the file, assuming it's an ASCII file, you can do that here. 
Otherwise, we'll have another file that we can mess with. Because this is just read data partition file. So what I can do is call call it load. And maybe I'll call it load kernel. Huh? Or load other file. I'll call it load kernel, because I proved that I can load a thing here. And I'll pass in a different file, and I guess we'll look for that. So... That's basically what I want to do on the next one. I guess right before I end, since I'm searching for specific stuff here and I have string string and it kind of works, let's search for a specific file here just to make sure it works with that as well. So I want to search for whatever my file name is going to be, which is, in this case, I was searching for test.txt. Let's say we, I could pass in a file name, really. Let's say load file. Load data partition file. Yeah, let's say load data partition file and I pass in a file name you see where I'm going with this so I'll search for that file name in the buffer and if we find it it will say could not find file percent s and data partition and that will be the passed in file name which I called it a different file name, so this will be data file. Because that'll make more sense. <laughs> I don't want to overstep my boundaries with the other file names with the same name. Okay, the other variable names, rather. So if we find that, we'll have found the name, and I'll move past it, and then search for this, basically. So that'll be all right. Okay, so that searches for a specific file that we pass in. Of course, I called the function something different. I don't remember the old name, but that's okay. We'll see if that still works. And that way I can print it over here. And I'll say for file percent %s. And that'll be the input file name, which is data file. Okay, just to prove that it, it looks, that'll, that'll look better. So I called it read data partition file. And now it's called load data partition file. Okay. Um, but that has a specific file name, so I can't call it with void, so never mind. <laughs> never mind, I can't do that. It'll be load kernel. I'm doing a I'm doing a right crap job right now. Apologies. I will name data file, I'll just make it a local variable in this function here. And it'll be at the moment. At the moment, it'll be test.txt. I'll say change to kernel name, e.g. kernel, <laughs> whatever I call it, kernel.bin, kernel.exe, something like that. I'll have to call it something else, or I can have a wrapper around this function that is called. But anyway, that's that's what it'll end up being on the next video. We'll load a kernel, and I'll just change this to the kernel name and, and try that out. And I'll try to think of a better abstraction to maybe input the name at runtime from the user and use that. So right now we'll just have it be local to this function here, and that'll be all right. So I'll search for that file name, see if we can still load it up. So I'll say load file instead of that. Load file from data partition. Eventually it'll be load kernel. Data file. Incompatible pointer types, because I did not put the u on there to signify a UTF-16 and a char-16t type and compatible pointer types for string string. That's true. So why does it not like that? Oh, because I did char-16, yeah. Just make it that file. Okay. String position file name does not like it. 2040. Uh, okay because I didn't change the name for that. And it's data file, not data name. Did you mean file? I did at 2042 here. Okay. <laughs> I wish I could program. All right, disk contents for file, a bunch of crap that is not correct. It did print testing though. Because I'm searching for the name as ASCII and as the regular one. Really annoying.
That's fine. We'll do this. <laughs> I'll just do that. And then I can use that where I'm printing the name out and we'll just forget this ever happened because it's not great code. It's terrible code. That's okay. I just want to use this as a visual indicator because I'm not going to print out text data for a, a binary file. I just wanted to, to print that out. This contents for file test.txt. There we go. Testing, press any key to go back. So I'm going to change that to load a kernel on the next one. It won't really be a full OS kernel, of course. It'll be a sample kernel. And it's just going to probably take in the GOP data for the frame buffer and print something to the screen just to prove that we can load something and print to the screen. Because this video took longer than I thought it would, so. And I don't want to encroach too much on the two hour mark for uh, editing purposes, so okay. Hopefully that was all right, good amount of data. Maybe it was entertaining, probably not. Hopefully you enjoyed regardless. And I'll get to loading a binary file on the next one. So I will see you then. I'll still try to tweak the audio and stuff as I go along since tonight I'm kind of tired and, you know, stuff changes as far as sibilance and, you know, gain values and stuff on the, the mic and the audio interface. So it's still the learning process as I go along, but it still should be better than it was. But anyway, I'll have a thing up here instead of test file being test. We proved we could do this. And I didn't have the kernel stuff here. I thought I did. I guess I don't. Um, I'll make a couple of kernel things here because I want to support a few different types. And I will get into this on the next one. I'm just putting this here so I don't forget. <laughs> I'll have a plain binary kernel and some other stuff. Let's say uh, we'll just do this. Flat binary kernel file. I'll have an elf 64. These will all be position independent, by the way. I'll call them kernel binary. Kernel binaries. Elf 64, position independent, executable, kernel binary. And I'll have a position, or sorry, a portable executable, 32 plus for 64 bit, position independent, executable, kernel binary. So I'll have different files for these. The elf one I'll probably call kernel elf, this I'll call kernel exe or kernel pe. Elf, I'll just, just to give them different names. And I'll have stuff to write these things later. So I'll make them probably as separate targets. And then I can, you know, so make by default will not include one, but if you want to include it, I'll have separate targets down here probably for that, that kind of stuff. So like kernel bin elf and pi. Or, well, PE. I'll have these things later. Right now I'm gonna not do these. So, that'll be, these will be to do values, right? Uh, okay. So, let's just make sure everything works before I end this. And that compiles and we're good. Kernel's not gonna do anything. It'll say cannot open that file, which is great. So, why would it? Why would it open it? That's interesting. Because I had this to do here? Because <laughs> I removed test file? Oh, because I removed test file. Yeah, that's my bad. I want to keep it there until this video ends. Okay. That way it'll print it. Oh, and then I wanted to check if it worked with GCC and Clang. So let's do that. And we're good there. Let's actually compile it. I don't have any issues. And it still prints it. Hey, we're good there. Okay. Coolio, cool beans. All right. I'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching. Greatly appreciate it. Uh, drink more agua because it's good for you. And cheers.